Good morning. I'm Peggy Shane. It's so good to see you all on this Palm Sunday morning and the very beginning of Holy Week. As we say each Sunday, we are an open and affirming congregation, which means that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are invited, you are welcomed here. If you are a first time visitor, we encourage you to fill out a pew card so that we can be in touch with you and thank you for your attendance. Today, we welcome back Reverend Robert uh, La Rochelle and his wife, Tricia, is with us this morning. Um, and he will also be here to lead us on our uh, 10 o'clock Easter service next week. So I uh, hope you can all make it for that too. We are very blessed to have Pastor Bob with us for these two very important days in our Christian year. So please see his brief biography in our worship folder. For announcements, we have a few keying up here. Good morning. Felix Pierce on behalf of Christian Education and Faith Formation. Just want to announce that next Sunday, Easter Sunday, there will be no church school, but the nursery will be open for parents looking for a quiet place to worship with infants and toddlers. Also want to call your attention to Circle of Caring on Tuesday, April 11th at 10 a.m. That is when we will invite you to, to come prepare to assemble bags of appreciation for police and firefighters in the town of East Hartford. We'll be putting Hershey Kisses in the fabric bag and adding a tag to remind our first responders that they are loved all ages and abilities are welcome. A sign-up sheet is available in the crossroads. We did this previously for Riverside uh, Nursing Home in East Hartford. This time we're not looking for candy donations, however. Thank you. Hi, good morning. There you go. I am Linda Russell on behalf of Church Growth and also have Felix standing next to me for CP as well. Um, we are going to be handing out next week for Easter, um, hoping we'll have lots of visitors and we want to give them something to remember us by. So we're going to be handing out these little boxes. <laughs> with, I know it's hard to see from back there, but one side has a bunny rabbit and a happy Easter and it says, hope you'll hop over to see us again soon. I know, corny. And the other side has our traditional you are loved <laughs> and our church information. And we're going to be filling those with a children's prayer, a jelly beans and chocolates, and little paper grass to go in there as well. And I'm doing my best Vanna White. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I also want to let you know that we are having a Good Friday service at 5.30 uh, this Friday. It'll, be, it'll include Tenebrae and also the placing of the shroud on our cross outside. The service will be inside, of course, but then afterwards we'll all go outside and place the shroud on the cross. Um, we have also have council this Tuesday, at, I believe at 7 o'clock. Um, all are welcome to attend. No, is it this is a Thursday? No, it was last year. No, we don't have council. Sorry, I take that all back. Um, <laughs> so please now silence your electronic devices if you haven't already done so, and rise if you are able, and take a few minutes, moments to greet each other and pass the peace of Christ. Just one other announcement I want to make uh, clear. There is going to be a sunrise service um, next, uh, next week uh, for Easter. That'll be at uh, 6.30, Sue? Yeah. 6.30, okay. So I hope you can make that. And stand up again, because uh, we'd like you to, to join in our singing, our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, hymn number 192.
Good morning. Welcome to the South Congregational Church this morning. Go Huskies. Please join me in the call to worship, followed by the prayer of adoration and the Lord's Prayer. Jesus comes humbly mounted on a donkey and into our lives. We welcome Jesus and give thanks for this day of celebration. Come with your branches, hosannas, and songs. We come with joyful and thankful hearts. Blessed is Jesus who comes this day on his way to the cross. We welcome Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we praise him. Triumphant Lord, we rejoice in your entry into Jerusalem, into the world of our lives. We join with the crowds, we sing your praises and our hearts are lifted in wonder, joy and expectation. Even so, we are not fully aware of what your coming truly means. Our hearts may rejoice in this day, but our minds are distanced from the true and full understanding of your coming. Help us to reflect our Christian faith that has brought us to this moment of worship. Help us to fully, fully aware of what your triumph entry into Jerusalem, into the world really means in so many years now, and still means for us today. In adoration, thankfulness, and contrition, we pray as Jesus is taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Bob LaRochelle, and it is a joy for me to be with you in worship today. I was here several weeks ago, and I really appreciated the warm, welcoming atmosphere of this faith community. So it was, uh, it's really great to be back here today on this special day, Palm Sunday, and also to be joining together with you at worship next Sunday, the glorious feast of Easter. So as we gather together for worship, let's pause in silence, calling to mind our own intentions, our own personal needs, the needs of those whom we know, the needs of those whom we don't know. God, on this holy day of Palm Sunday and Passion, we have so many mixed feelings inside of us. We remember your son's triumphant entry into Jerusalem with people shouting praises and waving palm branches. And we join them in our own praises. And yet, we remember too that this wonderful parade for your son becomes another kind of parade before officials and the boring crowds, booing crowds. And instead of the crowd singing his praises, they are shouting to crucify him. And our hearts are broken by those very shouts and the pain of suffering he bore that day. And so we pray. We pray for the victims of human tragedies, for those who endure pain and suffering in their lives. We pray for those in prison, the repentant and unrepentant. We pray for those rejected by others. We pray for the ill and the infirmed. We pray in silence for that which we hold in our hearts. Lord, enter our lives, our churches, our cities, our countries once again today. Heal us, O Lord. Transform us. Renew us. During this Holy Week, draw us closer to you on our journey. Empower us with strength and with courage and with the assurance that you are with us, world without end. And this do we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Most Holy God, as we celebrate Palm Sunday and knowing the events that will follow in the Holy Week, we offer what we have to give in gratitude for all that you have given to us. Amen. O God of all times and places, may these offerings bring life-changing good news, both to those who give and to all who are reached by the caring ministries of the church. May they help to restore relationships of trust among us and an outpouring of generosity that echoes your steadfast love around the world. Amen. We hear now the word of God. This morning's scriptures readings. The first is from Isaiah 4, 50, verses 4 through 9. You can follow along in the Pew Bibles on page 594. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave, him, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The second reading this morning is from Luke 19, verses 28 through 44. And you can follow along in the Pew Bibles on pages 855 to 856. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. 
untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, if you, if you even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up the ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. This ends today's reading. May God bless us in our understanding. Let us pray. Good and wonderful God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be truly acceptable to you, O God, our rock, our mighty fortress, and our redeemer. Amen. My friends, with our participation in this service this morning, we enter into what I would call the Holy Week experience. And I would strongly encourage all of us, including myself, to both enter and to go through this week with what I describe as a heightened awareness. A heightened awareness. It's this awareness that while we'll be gathering at this time next Sunday to celebrate the incredible, joyful celebration of Easter, while we'll rejoice in the experience of being in this sanctuary together and singing beautiful hymns, while we may be chomping on jelly beans, and while our young will be taking in and absorbing all the joy that comes from the presence and the goodwill of the Easter Bunny, who leaves good things for us adults as well, while we'll be rejoicing in our Easter experience next week, and that will be wonderful, this week offers for us something entirely different indeed. You see, in his entrance into Jerusalem, an event we commemorate on what's called Palm Sunday, or quite appropriately, Palm Sunday slash the Sunday of the Passion. With this entrance of Jesus, and most importantly, with our concentration on it, we go into this week in which we come face to face with a simple and a painful fact. And that is this. This is the week in which this man, Jesus, this young man, Jesus, entered Jerusalem with loud hosannas that would soon, days later, into painful tears, this Jesus would gather in an upper room with his closest friends, one of whom would betray him that very night. This Jesus, who filled with anguish and pain, would cry out the words of the psalm, Psalm 22, asking why he was being forsaken and then left on a cross to die. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandon me. The words of Psalm 22. This Jesus, who as this week comes to its end, offers for us a portrait of a battered and beaten man, left to rest forever in a tomb, the gravesite of his day. What I want to do, my friends, is to suggest to you, and to suggest to myself as well, for we teach best what we most really need to know, right? What I want to suggest is this that while our minds and our bellies may be set on Easter, we shouldn't just fly by Holy Week. If anything, what we must do is to have a heightened awareness of these days that lead up to what we celebrate with joy and with glee just seven days away come next Sunday morning. 
My suggestion to all of us is that we enter into what I describe as a Holy Week consciousness. We can do that in all kinds of different ways. On our own, we can read the selections from the Gospels that take us through these Holy Week days, understood in our language as Palm Sunday, Monday or Holy Thursday, the Friday we call Good, and Holy Saturday, a day so often overlooked, the day that we face the simple fact that Jesus died and was placed in the tomb. Many important details about those days may be found in the closing chapters of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, beginning with Jesus entering Jerusalem, which we heard this morning. This is not easy, this entrance into a Holy Week consciousness or a mindset. In fact, it's rather hard. Spring in New England can be a wonderful thing, an indication that the cold days of darkness and winter are over. And it's right to rejoice in springtime's glow as well as the Red Sox playing at Fenway Park. They won yesterday. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I have long felt the importance of embracing that awareness, that consciousness of this week that kind of flippantly goes by the name holy, though something flippant it most certainly is not. So let me tell you how I learned about the importance of Holy Week. When I was 45 years old, I made the decision to leave the Catholic Church, where I had served as an ordained permanent deacon, youth minister, director of religious education, and religion teacher right down the road here at East Catholic High School, where I taught for 11 years, where I was fortunate enough to have met my wife, who also taught there. Anyway, when I was 45, I made the change. And while I had reasons to leave the Catholic Church, I did not depart as an angry Catholic. In fact, I was a really grateful one. And one of the most important reasons for that gratitude was my experience as a child and then as an adolescent, when I served as an altar boy for about 10 years for the national headquarters of a group of nuns up in Putnam, the national headquarters of the Daughters of the Holy Spirit. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, I have a lot of good memories from those days, and it pains me that this place where I spent countless hours serving these nuns has now been sold off to a for-profit private school with a national reputation for basketball. Anyway, one of those things I both remember and appreciate the most as well was my experience serving at Mass there on Palm Sunday and Holy Thursday, as well as the commemoration of Good Friday, and then, once again, at 11 o'clock on Holy Saturday night, participating in the two and a half hour long celebration of the Easter Vigil service. Now back to the answer to my question. Okay, why do I bring this up? To cut to the chase, what I learned most from that experience many, many years ago was the importance of Holy Week. The importance of Holy Week and the simple awareness of what happened in the earthly life of Jesus in those days we commemorate during this week in accord with our calendars. Sunday, a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this week is getting all the more intense and is likely not to end well. Thursday, a meal while hidden in an upper room Take and eat. This is my body given for you. My blood poured out for you. Bread, wine, the cup of suffering. Friday, pain and anguish, all leading to death. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus on the cross. Saturday, the simple silence where we remember that Jesus lay dead in the tomb. As a result of this experience, my friends, one for which I'm so grateful and glad to share with you, ever since I was very young, it's bothered me when on Good Friday afternoon, I would discover life as business as usual. Part of me gets that. I know people, myself included, are busy during the week, and I'm aware that when I was working full time, and had Good Friday off, I needed free time to catch up on some chores. I get all of that. And I'm not going to lie to you and say that I'll abstain from watching the Red Sox should they happen to play a game on Good Friday. But what I will say 
is that I will encourage all of us, and that includes myself, where we teach best what we most need to learn. I'll encourage all of us to experience this week with a heightened awareness, an awareness of this amazing man who was nailed to the cross and who suffered so painful a death. I can't say this enough. I would encourage us as well that even as we call to mind all of his pain and all of his anguish, it's important to recognize that our faith points us powerfully in the direction of hope. That faith offers us a heightened awareness as well, leading us to consider what this Holy Week really means, asking questions of ourselves. How does this experience of Jesus apply to me? How does it apply to us? What's it got to do with all of our lives in this God's world? Important questions indeed. So let's have a special week, okay? A holy week, in fact. A week when we take in for ourselves and in our minds and in our hearts absorb the experience of Jesus. Jesus before Pilate. Jesus in the upper room knowing that someone there, one of his friends, is going to turn him over to death. Jesus up on a cross. Jesus breathing his last. Jesus taken down from the cross. Jesus left in the tomb. Through our sincere experience of all these important moments in the life of Jesus and of those who knew him best, in our experience of this week that goes by the name holy, may we all experience a heightened awareness. Let us pray. From the water to the shore, from the death that reigns no more, Christians, let your spirit soar. He has life restored. May yours be a truly holy week. Amen. My friends, this table is open to all who confess Jesus as the Christ and seek to follow in Christ's way. Come to this sacred table as we enter Holy Week. Come to this sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness, in our emptiness, we stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Come to this table not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. 
Come to this table then, sisters and brothers. Come as you are. Partake and share. It is spread for you and for me that we might again know that God has come to us, has shared our common lot, and has invited us to join the people of God's new age. God be with you, my friends. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Holy God, we praise you and bless you for creation and for the gift of life and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raise Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and of wine and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise, we may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue to be faithful in all things. So now we call to mind that on the night before he died, our Lord Jesus gathered at table with his closest friends, he took bread in his hands, he broke the bread, he gave it to his beloved saying to them, take this all of you and eat, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When supper had ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave God thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, do this in memory of me. Let us share with one another the bread and the cup. And let us pray together. We give thanks to you, O God, for the gifts of your table, for love that heals and forgives, that calls and sends. In that love, send us out. In that love, make us new, so that we might be bread for each other and light for the world. Amen. Our closing hymn.
My friends, may God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face to shine upon you. May God look upon you with kindness and graciousness and give you peace. Amen. Amen. It's been a joy to worship with you this morning. I wish you a very, very meaningful Holy Week, and I look forward to worshiping with you on the joyous feast of Easter next Sunday. Have a wonderful day.